Hello everybody. So this is the final video in my house paint series and uh, I'm really happy to share this with you. Uh, very happy with uh, kind of the last things that I did and wanted to talk to you a little bit about what those things were. And uh, I kind of call this uh, my clarify stage for those of you who are taking my online course, Powerful Design and Personal Color. And um, yeah, so basically this would be that final stage where you know, you're trying to pull things together, you're trying to harmonize, and you know, what better uh, way to do that than applying a glaze? And here, I did start out with kind of a light glaze, and it was just that golden Nico Azo Quinacridone Gold, I believe it is. It's kind of a long name, but what I like about it is that it's, it's really transparent, and you know, I, I do thin it out with airbrush medium made by Golden as well. And so by doing that, I have full control over, you know, how much color there is, how transparent it is, that kind of thing. So I just applied that glaze and now I'm going back into painting. And what I'm doing here, you know, just adding little touches to move the eye around. And uh, yeah, this is something that we talk a lot about again in my course. And, and you know, it's all about uh, definitely, you know, we all use our intuition and, and that's what guides us for much of the painting and that never changes. But I think the difference, what I noticed was that when you start to understand the power of understanding what makes a strong composition and, you know, how much latitude you have in mixing your colors, it just changes everything. And when I, you know, when I discovered that, and again, it's, it's been a 30 year process, a 30 year journey. so my reason for creating that course was to hopefully uh, allow people to uh, greatly increase their ability to, you know, not make the same mistakes I did to kind of learn from my own experience. Um, I, my greatest uh, sort of regret, I guess, is that I didn't know this information 30 years ago and that's what really motivated me to you know, get the information out there in a, in a course that people could take and literally learn everything that I learned, you know, over a 30 year period in, in just a, in a few months. And again, if I'd had this information a long time ago, uh, I think I would have produced a lot more paintings, but things are what they are. And that's why I'm, I'm so committed to sharing, you know, whatever I can through all different sorts of avenues, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or my course, or, you know, I now have a new membership group, which those students who are now in my um, online course, Powerful Design and Personal Color, can actually join this membership group where I share, you know, in greater detail and in greater length these videos. So, for instance, this video is actually going to be a very long video that I'll be sharing with them pretty soon. It's not quite ready yet, but I just have so much to share and you know every platform's a little different. Like YouTube, I I realize that, you know, people are busy and they don't have a lot of time to watch a video, so I keep these kind of short and concise and you know try to share what I can, but you know, art is not easy and there's an awful lot that can be learned. Um, and I'm kind of giving you the the main things that I'm doing, I mean, you know, here I'm trying some spray paint for the very first time. I was so excited to try it because I've always loved graffiti and uh, I, I, I did an experiment with the different kinds of tips. And again, that's material that's going to be in my Watch, Learn, Grow membership group. So for those of you who are in that group, uh, you'll see that test and I talk about the different tips. Um, and again, you know, just there's way too much information to share everything here on this platform, but I I do love it. I, I just think that this is a, an amazing way to share some of the things that I do. And obviously this painting is uh, very not objective and, you know, some will call this abstraction, but it's really non-objective work where, you know, there is really no relationship to anything that you really recognize. I mean, stripes and shapes and, and things like that are not really considered to be um, what we talk about when we do abstract work. So there's a difference between abstraction and non-objectivity and that's also something that I point out. But in any case, you know, I think what I wanna say in this video is that 
Yes, this painting has been a process, but it, it's, and it's, it's such a wonderful process and such a wonderful journey. And one of the big things that I try to uh, encourage my students to do, whether it's a live workshop or the online course or whatever it is, is to, you know, set the bar really high. Set it high so that you're aiming for something that you, you love in your work, right? And that could be the elements, the various kinds of elements of design, whether it's a shape or a color, you know, maybe you love to play with scale or maybe you love texture, you know, all these things are really important. But, you know, even looking over my, my 30 years of painting, I, on one hand, could probably list the number of paintings that I truly love. And I'm, I feel really thankful in that this one painting uh, actually came together. I think it's probably one of my favorite paintings that I, I, I very rarely would ever say that. <laughs> and so I'm so happy that I was able to document this and then share it with you and now show you the final painting because it is rare when that happens for me. Just, I show you a lot of things, you know, but, and, and I always aim for loving what the final thing is. But even if I fall short of that, a lot of great things happen. You know, number one, I did the work. And number two, I learned an awful lot. It's, it's all about the journey for me. And if you happen to love your painting or like it a lot at the end, that to me is just a great bonus. But really, the best part of painting for me is always the journey. And it's good to aim high <laughs> because uh, Loving your work is a very high standard, um, at least in my world, and I'm sure it is in yours as well. So, you know, and it, it doesn't mean that even you love every single part of your painting. You know, maybe you love certain parts and, you know, you kind of remember that. You remember how you love this one area. And then as you move on to the next painting and the next painting, in your, in your mind, you know, you are learning a lot about yourself. And it's like a puzzle piece that you don't, you just can't get it all from one painting and you can't get it all from painting for one year or five years or 10 years. It's like a lifetime. It's a lifetime. No matter when you jump in to start painting, um, it, it's just something that comes from, yes, intuition, but there's a lot of information gathering in your life. You know, think about all the things that you've seen over a lifetime and all the things that have inspired you, well, those are the things that are going to help you to know what you want to say in your work. So thanks for staying with me in this series, and I'm now working on a new one. It's going to be very different than this one. I'm excited. I just started it yesterday, but um, appreciate your comments. Uh, you know, if you have any suggestions for titles, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm currently trying to figure that one out myself. And uh, this will be part of a, a very large solo exhibition in 2020. Uh, University of Idaho uh, School of Art and Architecture at the Pritchard Gallery in Moscow, Idaho. So I have a lot of work I'd like to do before that show. And I hope to share a lot of it with you. So thanks again. Bye now.